and thank you for putting us on course. All right, our next speaker is a Cook County Board President. She came here directly from Spring Springfield fighting for the citizens and the taxpayers on a very tough issue, Medicaid. She was elected 18 months ago. Prior to that, she served as alderman, and she's been dedicated to public service for over two decades. Ladies and gentlemen, Cook County Board President, Tony Preckwinkle. <laughs> Madam President. All right, I'll call her. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Thank you. Uh, our guest today is Arnold Randall, who is superintendent of the Forest Preserve District of Cook County. And I, as I was sitting at the table, I was trying to remember how long it's been that I've known Arnold. I think it's uh, almost a couple decades now. Uh, he came to work for the city of Chicago. I think he was in the mayor's office first, and then went to the park district for a number of years, and then uh, served as the commissioner of the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, then went to the Olympics to, to work on our Olympic bid with Lori Healy and her team. Uh, came to the University of Chicago. And, and uh, I was able to poach him um, to come and work for the Forest Preserve District. He served first on our policy team and then our transition team on the Forest Preserve District. And I'm very grateful to him for his public service and his commitment to our district. And I think you'll hear today that we're trying to not only change the direction of the Forest Preserve District, but enrich its programming and its contribution to the people of Cook County. Please welcome him. Okay, well thank you very much, and it is really a pleasure to be here, and it's sort of like a friends and family day here at uh, the City Club. So there's so many people that I've worked with over the years who are here today, so I really appreciate uh, you coming out to hear about what I've been doing lately, which is pretty cool stuff. I again want to acknowledge uh, Forest Preserve Board President, uh, Tony Preckwinkle. She's obviously, everybody knows her as a county board president, but she's the Forest Preserve Board President, and it's uh, a big deal that I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Um, I want to thank all the other elected officials here today. I want to certainly, I'm going to ask our team, the Forest Preserve team, to stand up. We've got our leadership team here. Uh, all the things that I'm going to talk about are, you know, the results of a lot of different folks who are, who are doing great things at the Forest Preserve District. And last but not least, I want to recognize my wife, Jennifer, who is here as well. So it is a, it is a great pleasure to be here today, um, you know, representing the Forest Preserve District, and it's a privilege to be responsible for the day-to-day -day management. Uh, President Prankwickle mentioned she appointed me about 18 months ago. And I got to say, it's the best job I've ever had. And that's, that's, no, that's no small feat, because I've had some, a lot of wonderful jobs over the years. When the district was established almost 100 years ago, it was the first in the nation. So we're the oldest uh, in the nation. It was a, a process that, uh, the founding was a process that took place over several years. It started in 1913 with the passage of a state law providing for the preservation of forests and natural lands that authorized the formation of a forest preserve district. So they didn't exist before 100 years ago. Uh, under this new law in 1914, the residents of Cook County voted to establish a forest preserve district in Cook County. So that was a significant date and time for us as well. And the first meeting of the Board of Commissioners, Forest Preserve Board of Commissioners, happened in February of 1915. And if you look at our seal, uh, you'll see 1915 on the, on the seal, and that's why it's there. So that means we have a centennial anniversary coming up. We're coming up on 100 years of forest, a forest preserve district here. Yeah, we've got some cool pictures from our archives. <laughs> You cannot tell the story of the Forest Preserve picture with Forest Preserve without pictures or animals. And so we couldn't bring the animals because it's a restaurant, but we did bring a lot of good pictures for you. Um, like our predecessors, we're going to celebrate this milestone over a three-year period starting in 2013, so next year. And in a bit, I'll talk more about our plans for how the district will use our 100th anniversary to re-examine and renew our vision and to help us set us the stage for the next 100 years. While the district has experienced many changes over the decades, there are three central tenets established almost 100 years ago that continue to guide our work today. The first is preservation. We acquire, restore, manage land in order to preserve public open space and the habitats that wildlife and plants need to, to thrive. The second is education. We provide environmental education, programming for all ages, with a particular focus on 
information and experiences that will inspire the next generation to take responsibility for protecting this land. And it's always in danger, by the way. There's always people who would rather do other things with this land. Um, so protect the land, plants, and wildlife in our region. And finally, recreation. So this is how a lot of you may experience the forest preserves. Not only are the forest preserves close to home, but they're also fun, and for a lot of people, they're free. And that's a very big, a big deal. They offer, we offer accessible recreation opportunities for all the residents of Cook County. I want to spend a little time here today painting a picture of how vast and significant the Forest Preserve District is, because until appointed uh, to this position by, by President Preckwinkle, I didn't fully grasp the richness of what the district offers and how it impacts the lives of those who use it, and it actually impacts you, whether you know it or not. The Forest Preserve District really is where the wilderness begins. I think that's going to be our new tagline, where the wilderness begins. Our lands serve as a gateway for the urban and suburban environment where we live <coughs> and work into a natural, vibrant land that's filled with, on <coughs> oh, I I that's filled with life. My ongoing effort to visit every single Forest Preserve holding is a challenge with 68,000 acres, so I can't say that I've visited every, every acre, but I've gotten to all parts uh, near and wide. But it's certainly taken me all four corners of this, this large, very large county. And whether it's paddling uh, for miles on the Skokie Lagoons with President Preckwinkle, no, no less, on New Year's Day, um, <laughs> touring, we've done it twice now, so. Um, touring the Pioneer Cabins at Sand Ridge Nature Center in South Holland, which are phenomenal. Uh, visiting some of our most dedicated volunteers up at Spring Creek uh, Valley Forest Preserve in Barrington, or hiking through the hills or ravines or even a canyon. We have a canyon. The only canyon in Cook County uh, is in the Palos area at Sagawa Environmental Le Learning Center. But, but despite visiting many dozens of sites, there's still much more to see, and which I believe is a real testament to just how extensive the Forest Preserve system is. At your seats today, you should have on your table, we've placed a short quiz to test your current knowledge of the forest preserves. If you haven't already, just take a minute. You can fill it out while I'm talking. And while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about, about the forest preserves. Don't feel bad if you don't do well, because it's probably, you're probably not alone. But you're going to get all the answers in my speech, so if you listen. <laughs> Even if you are among. <laughs> The millions of people who visit our forest preserves each year I have no doubt there's still plenty to surprise you and excite you about the lands that we protect, the programs we offer, our plans for the future, and all the things that you and your family can do to get healthy, have fun, and enjoy nature close to home, whether you live in the city or the suburbs. With over 68,000 acres, 68,700 and some change to be exact, uh, the Forest Preserve District uh, accounts for 11% of the land in Cook County. So think about that. 11% of the land mass in Cook County is made up of forest, forest preserves. To put that into context, if you lumped all those acres together, they would cover the cities of Peoria and Springfield. But of course you're not in that one just big uh, green space. The forest preserve system has often been compared to an emerald necklace that rings the city of Chicago and its suburbs. What this means is no matter where you are or work or live in Cook County, you're never more than 20 to 25 minutes away from a forest preserve holding. So it's accessible to you. It's not far. So many people think that you have to travel to Michigan or Wisconsin. I was one of those people, frankly, before I took this job, that you have to go to get into wilderness to go camping. You don't. It's here in your own backyard. It's here in Cook County. OK, I'm going to beat you over the head with some numbers right now, so get ready. Within those 68,000 acres, spread over 103 miles, the Forest Preserve District of Cook County has roughly 300 miles of marked trails for hiking, biking, horseback riding, and cross-country skiing if we had a winner. You could do that. Um, 22 dedicated nature preserves, 40 managed lakes or ponds, 274 picnic areas, or picnic groves, one wildlife research facility, three aquatic centers, four model boat areas, four snowmobile areas, or five snowmobile areas, six youth camps, seven major waterways, including both the North Branch of the Chicago River and the Des Plaines River, nine model airplane flying fields, and ten golf courses, which include the George Dunn National uh, Golf Course in Oak Forest, which has been recognized by Golf Digest as one of the premier public courses, not just in the region, but in the country. In addition to the land, it makes, a, and if you golfers, you golfers know that to be true, I'm not a golfer, I just take uh, golf, golf Digest as, as the Bible on that one. <laughs> Uh, and what everybody tells me who's a golfer. Um, in addition to the land that makes up the district, we also operate six nature centers where we offer free environmental education to children and adults. And it's incredible to watch young people interact. And it would have been incredible to watch you, frankly, if we, we brought our animals today, because people really react in a very interesting way when they see live animals. Uh, and uh, 
you see that interaction every day at our nature centers. Um, but with young people in particular, you're engaging them at a level with, with nature and with animals, and, and frankly, we're, we're, I think we're changing people's perspectives in their lives in a lot of different ways. Uh, there's a lot to get excited about there at our nature centers. We have interactive displays, nature-based activities, and an opportunity to see wild animals like snakes, turtles, and hawks up close. And two facilities that are among our crown jewels, so I'm going to shock some people here because they won't know this. Um, both the Brookfield Zoo and the Chicago Botanic Garden and have probably visited many times without knowing that they are part of the Forest Preserve District of Cook County system, and they have been for many years. They are both wonderful examples of public-private partnerships that leverage public dollars to raise private resources to operate, maintain, and grow these world-class institutions. And I think we have both representation from the zoo and from the garden here today, so I want to thank you both for being here. I'm proud to say that we go to great lengths to keep all of our lands safe for the families and individuals that use them. In fact, we maintain a, a trained and state certified police force that also acts as our own team of park rangers. So they're not your traditional police force. They actually do uh, much more. So if you've been to a national park, they act in that way as well. These officers spend much of their time on trails, riding mountain bikes and ATVs to re reach and serve cyclists and picnickers and walkers, enforce fishing and wildlife laws, uh, and assist our staff in fighting wildfires. And we do have, we have that issue as well. They're an integral part of the Forest Preserve District. The statistics have shown that our properties are even safer than the communities that surround them. And I can tell you, having visited many, many of our locations, I've never felt more safe than I do in the Forest Preserve District. Now, if you're a city person who's not used to being around nature, then that's, that's a different issue and you have to work with that. But and we'll get you educated at the nature centers. But the reality is that they're very safe and you should feel very comfortable visiting the Forest Preserves. At the district, we have a deep commitment to our responsibility to serve as stewards of the resources that we protect. That's our job. We've got to protect these resources. But that also includes taxpayer resources that fund our work. And it's also the plants and wildlife that grow and thrive on our lands and the quality of life and good health that access to green open spaces provide. That passion and commitment starts with the tr tremendous leadership of President Tony Preichwinkel. So the president, you know, I think the things that we get to do really are set by the tone that she has set in county government and in the Forest Preserve District. We, we are committed to open, openness and transparency uh, and really being, putting, you know, residents first. They're our customers. We want to make sure that people have the opportunity to, to participate in a way that is beneficial to them and that's going to improve the quality of their lives. And she sets the tone. Many of you may not be aware, and I've already said this, that you know, the President and the County Board of Commissioners of Cook County itself also serve as the President and the Commissioners of the Forest Preserve District. So there's, we actually have a separate board and separate board meetings and separate, uh, conduct separate business in the larger county. Uh, we're an entirely separate and unique branch of government like the Park District is for the City of Chicago with its own independent taxing authority. And this is important to keep in mind as we talk about the district's budget. President Preckwinkle has provided a clear mandate for reform and accountability both for county government and for the forest preserves. Under her leadership, our critically important stewardship of the land must be complemented by strong fiscal stewardship of the taxpayer resources that fund our work. And we get that. To that end, last year we conducted the forest preserves' first comprehensive desk audit that assessed our organization by examining each and every one of our jobs and its operational effectiveness, unheard of for county government. The audit helped us to identify and begin implementing 118 recommendations, so it was pretty <laughs> thorough, uh, to improve our operations, increase our efficiency, maximize staff and financial resources. For example, the desk audit found that there were district staff who had never had a performance evaluation in 20 years. Imagine that. How do you do a good job if you've never been told that you're doing a good job or, or you know, what the expectations of your job are? Uh, many people didn't know who the direct managers were. Numerous facilities were without access to computers or ma modern technology, let alone the internet. So we're taking actions to address these issues with a swift and response in a swift and responsible manner. In addition, we've taken a hard look at our budget. So 92% of our total general operating budget for the district now goes directly to preservation, restoration, education, recreation, public safety, and the maintenance of our trails, groves, and family picnic areas. So the money that we get, the small sliver on your property tax bill, 92% of that goes to direct services for the public. We are also in the process of taking budget neutral steps to raise much needed new capital to take advantage of favorable market conditions, uh, to issue approximately $100, new, uh, $100 million uh, in new bonds by the end of next month. So again, we're doing this without raising taxes. And this is going to go directly into our capital program. Approximately 25% of these funds will be used to make strategic land acquisitions to fill the gaps in our greenway and trail system and to add to our forests, prairies, and savannas. 
As the population of Cook County has increased over the years, it's led to a lower percentage of open land per capita than surrounding communities. So although we're the, loud, the largest forest reserve system, serve, uh, large, largest forest reserve in the, the country, our population growth means we're still not, we don't have the highest uh, amount of open space per capita, so we've got work to do there. We need to ensure that green space will be available to future generations by protecting additional land in the public domain with natural areas fully restored that conserve natural habitats. In 2011, the district acquired approximately 170 additional acres, so that's, that's a step in the right direction, but we think we can do more. We're in the process of updating our land acquisition plan to guide future purchases and will work to fulfill uh, the state, uh, our state statute allowance of up to 75,000 acres. So we have the ability to go up to 75. We'll also earmark a portion of the bond money to address decades of deferred maintenance issues, including repair, very non-interesting, exciting things, but very important things like fixing bridges and plumbing systems and other related needs. These infrastructure improvements will be selected from the, the, deta the, detailed, the details in the district's new, more transparent five-year capital improvement plan, which was developed with public input. So we actually sent our planning folks out to farmers markets. We held public meetings. We went out to places where our regular users weren't. So we wanted to talk to the larger public and say, well, what do you think? What do you think we should be doing? What do you think is wrong? Or what, do you, what would you like to see more of? And so we went out and we did those over the last several months and we got great public input on that as well. We also developed uh, online surveys and stakeholder meetings. Uh, to that end, we'll invest as much as $22 million to complete a plan for uh, expanding the district's historic campgrounds. This is a signature project for us. We think that camping is a gateway opportunity for, for residents to, to get into nature and, and deal with the environment. I think if, if most of you, if you raised, if I said, how many of you are involved with camping and has led to your, an interest in nature after that, I think a lot of hands would go up. Uh, and so frankly, if we don't expose people to nature through nature centers or other ways early, then we lose them and they don't show an interest in what's going on. And so we think camping is a big deal, a very big deal. It's something that we used to do and we want to do more of moving forward. And I'm going to talk more about that in a few minutes. And at the Brookfield Zoo and Chicago Botanic Gardens, our bond funds, so we, we, we are, because we are partners with the zoo and the garden, we also recognize that we need to be uh, partners with money as well, not just saying we're partners. So we've, uh, we're pledging out of this $100 million uh, that, that we hope to get through these bond deals, that $15 million of that go to, uh, to the zoo and the garden uh, for capital improvements at both those locations. Finally, these bond proceeds will also <coughs> fund new projects such as additions to recreational offerings that will introduce new people to the forest preserves, promote a health, the health benefits of outdoor recreation, and provide new sources of non-tax revenues. To that end, we're working on a, to develop a new recreation master plan. So we're big on planning now uh, in the forest preserves. So we, you know, there's a lot of things to do, and there's probably more that you could do than you can do if you just sort of try to sit down and think about it. You actually need to have a plan. So the recreation master plan is the next big plan that we're undertaking. It's actually starting this week. Um, that plan will determine what types of new recreation offerings are needed but not available to, through alternate providers, whether or not they can be provided in a way that is compatible with our natural environment. So we have a very specific mission. So uh, we're not gonna build a golf dome. We're not gonna, you know, there's certain things, that, unless it's on a golf course, but we're not gonna build certain types of things because it's not in our mission. But there are things that can be compatible with nature that we think we can do, and that's an outdoor recreation focus. This plan will be used to establish budget priorities and land acquisition needs for the future. Now, I will say the number one question that I've gotten in the 18 months that I've been here is, when are you bringing back the toboggans? <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Uh, so I don't know the answer to that, that yet because I'm doing the recreation master plan. And so that's one of the things that's getting discussed. Um, some of the new recreational uh, features that have been suggested so far, there are things like zip lines, ropes courses, Additional mountain bike trails. Mountain biking is very big out in the south suburbs in the Palos area. Uh, outdoor concert venues, disc golf, dog parks, cross, more cross-country trails, and yes, even toboggans. So there's a possibility, but we need to investigate it and really think about it. Historically, the district has strived to achieve an 80-20 balance, with the 80% of our land being kept in as natural a condition as possible and 20% available to, uh, for compatible recreation. We anticipate that this ratio will continue even as we explore new opportunities. Again, at this point, we've not any, made any firm commitments or decisions, but we're exploring a wi wide range of exciting options that can, we can implement in a fiscally responsible manner, budget neutral, no tax increases, and in a way that's not detrimental to our natural holdings. While we're, looking hard to be, we're working hard to be good fiscal stewards, we're also expanding our efforts to raise the public profile and awareness of the district. So I'll tell you the other big thing that I hear is, 
forest preserves? Is that the parks? Or what do you guys do? What's that all about? Um, that's pretty common in the city of Chicago, and so we know we've got some work to do there. And this, I'm, that's why I'm glad Jay invited us, because we want to talk to people in the city about what is available and what the forest preserves are really about. Um, we want to connect and encourage all Cook County citizens, and particularly our families and young people from the city, to visit our lands and take advantage of as many programs and services we provide to help residents stay healthy, learn more about the natural ecology of our region, and to become ultimately active stewards of the environment. The district is a vital resource that supports good environmental health throughout our region. Our lands comprise the largest clean air resource in the region, cleansing and cooling the air we breathe. The forest preserves also are the region's greatest rainwater retainer, absorbing, cleaning, and evaporating hundreds of millions of gallons of rainwater in the fall <coughs> of the county each year, protecting hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses from flooding. Now, a lot of suburban leadership would say, we want you to do more of that. We'd like you to take all of our rainwater. Well, we can't do that without damaging our ecology, but we, we do a lot already, we believe. The preservation and environmental protection work of the forest preserves is essential to maintaining and enhancing the region's native biodiversity and health and facing increasing urbanization. So the more we build, the more important the forest preserves are, the more we have to protect them. Habitat loss, environmental pollution, and the introduction of, and the spread of invasive plant species. One of our biggest responsibilities is to protect the open lands under our stewardship by using resource management, a resource management philosophy that ensures the preservation of irreplaceable natural resources through the science-based practices such as soil conservation, controlled burning, and an important ecological tool to reduce and eliminate invasive species that threaten the native state of our land. So, uh, you know, prescribed burns and, and controlled burning is a big thing that we do, uh, and sometimes a controversial thing that we do, but it really helps to restore the environment and the ecology of those areas. The forest preserves work in this regard is implemented by our highly skilled resource management team, so that's a big part of our staff, our people who do that kind of work, and supported by thousands of volunteers. Now I gotta say, on volunteers, and, and Kathy Worst, our head of our volunteer program, is sitting up here as well. Uh, when I came to the Forest Preserve District, I had no idea that there were people working every day of the year, including those 10 degree days, out cutting buckthorn and pulling garlic mustard and doing, and doing all kind of cleanup work in our preserves. It's incredible the amount of talent and the tenacity that these folks have. And so uh, we want to continue that relationship and continue to grow that relationship. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting and walking through a lot of these preserves with these volunteers. And I said, you know, some of these folks have been doing this for 20 or 30 years. A great and timely example of our work, uh, example of our work to protect and preserve the natural lands of our county is the bald eagles nest and tamper slew out and pale. So we've gotten a lot of press on the eagles. People are really interested in eagles. And I learned more about eagles in the last month than I ever thought I would know. Um, <clears throat> we believe this is the, to be the first veri verifiable site in Cook County uh, where eggs, eagles have, eggs have been laid and hatched in more than a century. So we see eagles flying through, we see eagles doing different things, but we've never found an eagle's nest where the, the eggs were hatched, and the, now out in that area you'll see eagles flying around all, all summer until they migrate later in the fall. That's a big deal, and that's a big deal for environmentalists. The fact that bald eagles have chosen a nest here is a testament to the success of our environmental stewardship. It also reflects the fact that there's a growing understanding among the general public, which is part of a larger environmental, environmental movement. People are being more respectful of their natural lands. They're starting to, to get why that's important and the wildlife is responding by returning to these areas. For example, fishing is prohibited in parts of the preserve to, pro to provide a vibrant fishing habitat, a habitat for the fish. The fishermen of this community have respected this regulation. Eagles now depend on these fish for the bulk of their diet, so it's all connected. If this for food source wasn't available to them, then they would nest other places. They would nest in our area. These eagles have an incredible impact on the county. Since we announced the location of the nest almost six weeks ago, thousands of people have lined up along 131st Street to get a glimpse of the birds. I have personally learned, like I said, I've personally learned more about bald eagles than I ever thought I would know. If the nest is success, successful, the eagles will be here all summer, and they'll learn to hunt and fish, and then they'll make their way on in the fall. Uh, we hope they'll come back. We hope this will be a permanent place for them to spend each summer. Earlier this month, the Forest Preserve uh, District Board of Commissioners passed a resolution celebrating this permanent return, hopefully, of the bald eagle. I don't know if the bald eagles can read, but hopefully they'll, 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 they'll listen to our commissioners. And uh, along with the joy and inspiration that these eagles bring. Now, I got to tell you, so I'm not a birder, but I'm learning to be a birder. But I was very inspired when I went out with my, bin my, my binoculars and saw these bald eagles nesting. And it was very impressive to see. And so. Seeing nature in its purest form like that is an inspiration. It's part of the reason that we're doing what we're doing here. Um, 
In addition to our own efforts, notable academic and science re scientific research is also being conducted. So we do some research, but we actually have a lot of universities and partners who do research on forest preserve property. Uh, we recently held our first science and research symposium to showcase the very important role we play in bio as a biological field station for significant research and analysis. It was attended by more than 250 researchers, university partners, students, volunteer monitors, and others who spend time learning and interacting and collaborating with one another on such, <coughs> such topics as archaeolog the archaeological work being done on our lands, the urban coyote study we conducted, and my personal favor favorite, how beavers assist us in natural stormwater retention. <laughs> Much cheaper than building our own dams. <clears throat> it was actually pretty interesting stuff. Uh, um, when I started my presentation today, I outlined, th I outlined three tenets of the Forest Preserve District, preservation, education, and recreation. All equally important, but our educational and recreational offerings are perhaps the most familiar to Cook County residents. We offer a wide range of public outreach initiatives, education programs for children and families across Cook County, both for the city and suburbs, including a robust ecology curriculum for students. So last year, our nature centers, which really are a real strength for us, our nature centers are a wonderful place to visit. Uh, if you have kids, if you don't have kids, if you just want to take a walk, you'll learn a lot. And the staff there are phenomenal. Um, but at our six nature centers, which are located all across the district, all across Cook County, um, we, ho we hosted an estimated 8,000 new students from more than 150 schools, families, and scouting groups. The total group attendance for children in 2011 exceeded 35,000 visits. We're also proud to partner with the Chicago Wilderness Alliance's Leave No Child Inside initiative, which seeks to increase the amount of quality time that children spend outdoors by providing resources to help inspire kids to enjoy nature. The district is a proud founding member of Chicago Wilderness, and I'm proud to say that I've been recently elected the chair of that organization. Uh, it's a regional alliance of more than 250 organizations that work together to restore local nature, and this includes partners like the Park District and Open Lands and a lot of just, you know, very strong uh, open space advocates. And we're all band together to sort of to, to fight for, you know, to restore our local nature and ecology and make sure that we, we're taking care of our environment. But other programs uh, that more of you, you may know about, things like Fishing Buddies and the Mighty Acorns and our teen adopt a site and our teen Le service learning, engage more than 4,000 students from 35 schools and groups in learning about and caring for the forest preserves each year. These kinds of experiences are so important because they not only are fun, but they also teach children about ecology. You got a lot of good pictures in there, right? Um, and the importance of protecting our natural lands and to give them the tools to become committed stewards of our environment. If we don't introduce them young, this will be a theme, we don't introduce them young, we lose them. We need to get people introduced young. Now, I asked everyone in the room, if I asked everyone in this room to share with me their favorite outdoor adventures, many of you would discuss a camping experience that you share with your family or friends. So let me see a show of hands. How many of you have done a family camping experience in the Forest Preserve District in recent years? Family camping. Should be zero because we're not doing family camping in the Forest Preserve. <clears throat> you have to be part of your skit now, legally, I guess. <laughs> we, we've allowed the scouts, which are wonderful. I was a Boy Scout. We've allowed small groups to do it, but we've not allowed families and individuals to go out and do camping, and so um, it's a trick question, so, but I... Both picnic and camping were very popular activities in the forest preserves in our early days, but were not confined to specific camping areas, which raised concerns that eventually led to the prohibition of adult and family camping within the district. Sounds crazy, right? Um, currently, adult and family camping is prohibited, except for a few designated sites, and that's really relegated to the scouts. Finding ways to open up our forest preserve to provide urban and suburban families from Cook County with safe camping experience this close to home could represent a real opportunity for us to broaden and reach our effectiveness moving forward. I know that many of you have had the same fond memories of, that I do of sleeping outdoors, uh, hearing the wonderful new sounds of nature at night, and being with your family in a whole new quiet setting away from work and chores. And I hope that you're excited as I am about the idea of bringing camping back. I think this is a big deal. But we can't and won't move forward without a strategic plan. Again, big planning guy here, used to be the planning commission, so we gotta have plans. Um, and so this is one of our big initiatives. Now we're right in the middle actually of this camping master plan. We did a lot of public outreach. I think we got close to 1,500, uh, 1,300 responses from the public online. We've, we've done some, uh, some things as well to, re to reach out to key partners on this as well. All this sets the stage for what's to come at the, the Forest Preserve District, which is, is an exciting but critical juncture as we approach our centennial. The Forest Preserve founders, visionaries they were, probably didn't anticipate all the issues we're dealing with today with respect to global, global warming. I think they probably didn't know about sprawling urban growth. I think they probably figured that out. 
but public health issues, obesity, asthma, and new economic realities. So these are things that we need to take on moving forward. The 100th anniversary of the Forest Preserve District provides an opportunity to re-examine and renew our vision. We've been actively looking at this and helps us set the stage for the next 100 years. We hope to soon announce uh, the creation of a joint task force between the Forest Preserve District and the leadership of key open space organizations and civic organi organizations to plan for our 100-year anniversary. Together with these partners, we plan to engage a wide range of conservation and corporate thought leaders, researchers, government officials, policymakers, advocates, and others to, other users to help us create a new national model for public-private conservation uh, for large metropolitan areas. Together, we will consider that role, the role that the Forest Preserve District and its conservation areas play in economic vitality and quality of life in our region. We also explore how efforts should be improved, programmed, financed, and managed under new conditions not imagined a century ago. But we can't do this without all of you. We all have a stake in our public land. This is ours. You all pay for it. If you live in Cook County, you're paying for it. This is your land. We must all be committed to saving and restoring these rare natural communities in our region. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share this information about the Forest Preserve District, and I'd like to invite you to join our mission to promote preservation, education, and recreation in our lands by taking three actions when you leave here today. First, support our mission of preservation. We're proud to provide each of you with a purple uh, cone flower, so you should have some seeds at your desk. If you've got a yard, plant them out in your yard. This, this, is, the net, this is the official uh, flower of Cook County. If you didn't know, now you know. We encourage you to find a spot in your garden where a planter, where you can, you can uh, this Illinois prairie plant can bloom into a beautiful daisy-like flower. And if you want to get involved, there are lots of opportunities for individuals, companies, and organizations to support our work through volunteer activities, Kathy Worster, that can be implemented as part of our summer picnic uh, or event held in the forest preserves. And you can check out our website at www.fpdcc, or you can Google us, Forest Preserve District Cook County, and you can get more information on how to volunteer. Hope you learned something new today. I imagine it, it's not possible that you didn't. I'm, get, I'm gonna get the hook here in a minute. Um, <laughs> I'll just wrap it up by saying uh, I have the best job in county government except for my boss right there. Uh, and because uh, I get to go out and be part of this nature every day. And we're very fortunate to have it. I really want to encourage you to come out and see what's available to you. And thanks for your time today. Thank you, super Thank you, Superintendent. I don't have a hook, but I do have some questions. <laughs> Uh, first one from Suzanne Malik McKenna, a fellow member of the uh, City Club S. It's a tough time in government and in our economy. Why a bond issue now? It is, it is a tough time in the economy. Uh, we are in decent, the, the Forest Preserve District is actually in decent financial shape. And we're, again, we're a separate taxing body from the larger county, so we have the resources available. We want to take advantage of a historically low interest rate uh, to refinance some of the existing debt. We're not raising taxes, we're not proposing raising taxes, but we're going to take advantage of refinancing some of our debt. And we also want to take advantage of revenues that come into us already that we could use as alternate revenue bonds to support capital improvement. The reality is, is that there are a lot of things that weren't done in the district with respect to taking care of properties over the years that need to be done. They're not going away. Those issues have to be remedied. They have to be dealt with. We think this is a fiscally responsible way to do that, and we think there's a lot of work that needs to happen. And frankly, that will help to draw new users, users into the district. Very good. Okay. Patsy Benvenisti of the uh, Chicago Botanic Garden asks, does the Forest Preserve recognize that, quote, a nature deficit disorder is a huge issue for Cook County families? If yes, how, do you, uh, how does this issue rank in your priorities? Um, this is a big priority. I, you know, I live in the city, a uh, city dweller my whole life, and this is a conversation the president and I had you know, a while ago about how do we reach out to urban youth, because the reality is if you live in the built environment and you don't see much green space and you know you got the parks, thank God, or you go completely crazy, I guess, but um, getting young people out in the nature and families out in the nature really does change your perspective on things. And the more we can do that either through camping or, or nature centers or hikes or uh, other programming, uh, the better off we're going to be. There clearly is a deficit disorder. In fact, I spent some time with the Bot Botanic Garden staff yesterday out at the, Cook, the Sheriff's Cook County Boot Camp where we are participants and we help, we donate materials and they do a lot of work out there. Those young people had never, and I talked to some of the young people working there, they had never done anything like what they're doing there with respect to working and gardening and that sort of thing. And it's changed their perspectives. 
we need to catch people before they get to that point and get them involved in nature, and it will change their perspective and give them some different, uh, different opportunities. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Superintendent. Finally, we talked a little bit earlier about the uh, Chicago's proud history with the Special Olympics, and uh, I have a question. What programs do you have for children and adults with special needs in the forest reserves? So part of what we want to do through this recreation master plan is we want to do, uh, we want to look at where we're, where we're short with respect to dealing with people with disabilities and special needs. Uh, there are opportunities just like for every other child at nature centers. They're accessible, so there's certainly opportunities for, for people with special needs or special disabilities to come to our nature centers and participate in those programs. Um, but we want to do more. We think there's opportunities to do more. So there, we're certainly looking at through our, ma our recreation master plan and our, all, our other, all of our other initiatives as well. Um, we're certainly looking at how people use our picnic groves. Uh, they're not all accessible either. There's, there's opportunities there to make them more accessible for if you want to do special events and you have people with special needs, how can they use those more efficiently as well. So a lot of room. We've, I feel like we've made some really good progress. I think we've got a lot of work to do yet and certainly you know, look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Superintendent. Okay. Thank you.